Dear friends, colleague, comrade, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I greet you with all the greetings you like, and I wish you all the safe and tranquil life to have in your society, inshallah. Uh, as I mentioned in the Arabic talk, uh, we as Muslims, we celebrate the new 1443 Hijri year where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi immigrated from Mecca to Medina to establish Islam in Medina, the second city, after he was expelled with his companion from his uh, birthplace of in Mecca. And uh, we hope that this year, will be prosperous not only for Muslim, but for every human being and every creation of God, inshallah. Also, we should be celebrating the Chinese year, the Coptic year, and other years, inshallah. Today is our 13th episode of Fadfada. We'll be talking about uh, quite a few uh, points. Uh, Karl Marx, and most of you know him. Fankush is my invention, not my invention, it is my writing. Uh, tomato is my writing as well, uh, leaders is my writing, and Socrates, the wise man. And uh, the drawing in front of you, I'll uh, explain it to you later on, uh, inshallah. Some of you already understood uh, half of the story or half of the, the drawing, but the rest could not be able to uh, understand this drawing. I thank my colleague uh, Aya of making the uh, slideshow for me, and let us start. Uh, in the virtual world that we are living inside it, and we've been surrounding by this virtual world, uh, we received numerous messages, posts every day. Some of them could be resent to me by the Facebook, and some of them could be from friends or from people, some that we don't know. It became a necessity for somebody like myself when I organized my talk to look back at this, to revisit my messages or posts, and actually to choose from the others what I found suitable for me. That's why today I'm going to talk about four points. First of all, Karl Marx's statement about the fictitious capital. Second is uh, the Fankouche policy, which I wrote in uh, 2012. August 2012. The third one, which is a crazy tomato and the wise leader, which also I wrote in August uh, uh, 13, uh, 2013. And the fourth one, which is a message from Socrates about truth, goodness, and usefulness. Let us start the discussion of the first point with you. First of all, talk about the fictitious uh, fictitious uh, capital mentioned by uh, Karl Marx. Karl Marx make a story about a rich man, tourist, entered the poor village. The poor villagers were actually in debts because they built their life on borrowing money from one another. He went to the hotel and he was looking for a room to stay in. Then he got his hundred dollars. Where's the hundred dollars? This is hundred dollars. I don't have green things. This is hundred dollars. He bought it on the counter of the hotel owner. And he told him, give me a porter to go and see the rooms, if I like it or not. So the hotel owner was so happy. He took the hundred dollars and ran away to pay his debts, actually, to the butcher. The butcher was so happy and he was very happy to take the money and run away to pay his debts to the cattle dealer. The cattle dealers hurried up and was in a very exciting situation and went to pay his debts to the feed trader. The feed trader was nearly dancing of happiness and joy and he ran very fast to pay his debts to the truck driver. The truck driver hurried up with his car to the village 
and went to the hotel owner to pay his debts to the hotel owner because he used after traveling all these distances from the villages between the villages to rent a room in the hotel. And by the time he came to the hotel, the rich tourist came down to the hotel owner and they told him, sorry, sir, your rooms are not suitable for me. Give me my hundred dollars back. Okay, so he took his hundred dollars and he went away. So none of the villager uh, made any profit from the hundred dollars, but all of them paid their debts. And this is what Karl Marx said about this is the policy of USA when they manage the global economy. This is his statement. I think Karl Marx, yeah, I'll talk about Karl Marx later on. Fankush is a solution. This is something I wrote, as I mentioned to you, 2012. Fankush is the new media policy created by some countries, whether the Arabs, Asian, European, American, Canadian, whatever it is, African, whatever it is, but very obvious in the Arab world. What for? It was created to muzzle, to shut up, to muzzle the mouth of societies and nations. Fankush defines the parameters of the philosophy of whom? of the people, of the thinking, of those who believe in it is principles, the principles of Fankush. Ibn Fankush is defining the parameters of the philosophy of thinking of those who believe in it is principles. These principles represent new Hankuti and Tuchi Afshuchi, social climate waves or tsunami. Hankuti and Tuchi Afshuchi. If you ask me what's the meaning of them, nothing. But is that something I created or the people created when I came from originally in Egypt? The Hankata or Antakha or Afshakha to make any name become anything. And this policy and principles laid down by whom? By the theoretical thinkers, theoretical thinkers and theologians from amongst whom? Amongst those five categories. Number two, number one is shoes drenched men. In Arabic, it means that the people who get drunk by uh, drinking the cheapest the cheapest and the worst kind of uh, narcotics or alcoholics. And in, in Egypt, shoes drenched as if he is, or they are soaking the shoes in the water to make out of it is the alcoholic material for those people to drink. So this is number one thinker of this policy. Number two, the first tier of Hashashin. We know what Hashashin in English, which is the junkies and the boozed, or the poppies addicts. Number three is the first generation of the powder, you know, you know, you see, see my nose? Sniffers. Number four, the young LSD, marijuana, and recently the uh, uh, strokes something in the Middle East, abusers. Number five, the new sniffer organization. There's a new da'wa organization, there are new philosophy organization, there are new uh, 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 sniffers organizations. So those five theologians or leaders created the Hankuti, Antuchi, Afshuchi, social climate tsunami of the Fankush. What is the Fankush policy about? We have here uh, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve. Number one, the policy is making little media 
to be accepting hypocrisy, hypocrisy becomes a social climate to forge the citizen's mind. It's number one. Talk about hypocrisy. Lying system becomes the fulcrum of building the of building the Fancouche policy. Lying, you but come out. Hypocrisy, lying. Obscenity becomes cultural creativity. Adopting deception as new community intellectual system. History of literation became a solid part of educational curriculum. Keep changing and obliterating the history. Following the rule of religion is the nation's opium, which is mentioned by uh, Karl Marx long time ago. So I mentioned the fictitious statement of fictitious uh, capital by Karl Marx, which I agree with it. And here he mentioned again, religion is the nation's opium. Could be double-sorted statement, this one. It depends how we use it. Follow up the role of the religion of uh, is, is the nation's opium. Promoting the one-man state. I am your greater Lord. Like Pharaoh, like Neron in Rome, like Mao, like Stalin, like Hitler, like Nimrud, and like others. The one man state. I'm making security and military and religious institution to follow him blindly. Okay. Creating the new superstars, new stars from among us, the new new organization called New International Humanitarian Bullying and Thuggery Movement. Look at them when they come and speak on the media. And this is what the Prophet called them Al Ruaibudat, the idiotic individuals who are ignorant, know nothing about anything, and they come and become having a status to educate and teach the public. I call it the new international humanitarian bullying and thuggery movement, which is happening as I speak. Creating new democracy. What is that? Making oppression justice. Lying honesty. Menace honor. And treason pride. This is a new democracy stands behind this. Following blindly the decisions of the unknown deep states in the country. The last and not least, maybe or at least some more in the second slide, replacing our very well established moral values, principles, and ethics with strange, abnormal, odd, severe immoral behavior and manners. These are the policy of Fankush, which came by the Hankuti and Tuhi of Shuhi people. The third part of my discussion will be about the crazy tomato and the wise leader. That's what I wrote also in 2013. Crazy tomato, it's, impossible, it's, it's not impossible amongst us to find a wise and good and composed leader. The leader at the time of the Prophet was one individual, was him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then later, Omar Tam Khalafa became a group of people, big shura. Even at the end of his life, it became a shura. Then Shura later on became like uh, institutionalized and became democracy nowadays. Then Shura became obligatory and later on changed it into democracy as we see. Let us revisit the democracy again. Since it's not revelation, it's not Quran, it's not Bible, it's not Torah. Now democracy, our democracy is based on the election, the general election from the political parties. Okay? But we need to introduce to the political parties two candidates to become the independent members of the parliament. 
and their background should be either from the technocrat or the civil society workers. Technocrats who have been working in governments, civil servants, do they have the right to be elected as member of the parliament or member of the uh, shura or the upper house or lower house or the congress and the uh, congress and the other one called senate okay two added to be independent the people coming from the social uh, from the civil society organization and the technocrats call them independent members and those independent members in the parliament from them from them from them and from the list will be electing what i call the social services ministers so the winning political party will be appointing the president appointing the prime ministers appointing the sovereign ministers i'll discuss them later on in another talk but from the independent members which are technocrat and people from the civil society sector would be able to elect those uh, social services ministers. This is where we have two sides of the coin, not only one side of the coin. Here there'll be a challenge for the president and the prime minister to manage these two groups. A group is from his, his or her or own political party, and the other group has been elected from the member of the parliament and from the independent group, which is actually from the technocrat or from the actual so, uh, civil society organization. Okay, this is a challenge, and this is a new idea. The current democracy is like a football league. We have here the competition goes between Manchester United and Manchester City in uh, what they call, in, uh, in Spain, it's between Real Madrid and between. Uh, uh, Barcelona, uh, in Egypt between Ahli and Zamalek, uh, in maybe Qatar, Sad and Rayyan, and so on. Saudi Arabia and Kuwait and others. Okay, that's why the political election becomes like this crazy, this crazy witch. Tomorrow we are with this. A Labour Party and the Conservative here in America, the Democrat or the Republican, and we know all this, two parties only. Because they have the facilities and they have the history and the authority. Became like crazy witch, or as we call it, crazy tomato. Because tomato prices going up and down by the day. Uh, on its opinion, path and prices. And this is what the first part of my third point of discussion. The second one, the wise leader. Who is he or who is she? He or she? He or she or she or he? First of all, does not let the bites, you know the bites, of his enemy to cut his fingers. His enemies might have his finger in their mouth. Does not let them to cut it. It's number one. He or she lowered his or her head before the strong storm, before the tsunami. Because he knew or she knew that tsunami is coming. There's no point of standing against it. Bends their back away from the deadly arrows. Learns from their mistakes. And mistakes of others. Also, decreases their loss and change the loss into positive energy unites his fragmented nation or their fragmented nation as i said he, he or she builds alliances with other people saves his followers or her followers and prepares them for the next round don't have to win every round if you are in a league, you might have 40 match in the, in, in the year. So you, you lost one, two, three, four. You might actually come for the second round to win, to, 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 to win what you lost in the first round. Builds alliance 
to fail for second round, put his trust in his Lord or her Lord, Allah and us, and believes that he is or she is the servant of the people. These are 10 points which I wrote in 2013, as you can see it at the bottom. Okay. And this is what I draw for you. This is what I draw for you on the right hand side for myself, maybe, is Socrates with his statement coming in the coming slide. And the left hand side for me is Karl Marx. I mentioned his fictitious statement, his fictitious uh, capital statement, the tomato in the middle. And this is the Fancouche, which is produced by the media, which produce something nobody understand. This is the outcome of their product. Let us discuss the point number four, which is the statement or the discussion between Socrates and uh, a young man. A young man came to him one day and they told Socrates, this is about maybe three or 4,000 years ago, Socrates, let me tell you something bad about one of your students. He said, stop, 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 stop. Wait a minute, I need to do this test on you. He said, what test? Three, three step test. The young man said, three step test? He said, yes. Step number one is the truth. Are you sure that what you are going to tell me is true? It's the first test step in the Socrates test. The young man said, no, I'm not sure. You just heard it. Socrates told him how to tell me something that you are not sure of. Okay, let me go with you to the second step, which called the goodness. Then I said, okay. What will you tell me about my student? Is good? He said, no, 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 it's not bad. On the contrary. So Katiz told them, but if you are going to tell me a bad thing that you are not sure of, let me take you to the third step. First is the truth. Second is the goodness. Third is usefulness. He told him, is what you are going to tell me is useful for me? The young man was very embarrassed. Oh my God, he is roasting me. He said, no, sir. Socrates finished his discussion by saying, if it is not what you are telling me, true, good, and useful, true, good and useful why should i listen to you why should i listen to you the moral of the message is give yourself a chance to think about what you hear see read before you become convinced of it then you spread it especially the statements and the posts on the social media most of them are not true. Discussion, as we are now, now are discussing my, 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 my points with you, the four points. This quartet denotes the following. First of all, delusion of the foreign capital and the value of the national capital. Number two, the media industry policy, creating stupefacient people, stupefacient <coughs> people, deceiving young generations and destroying society. This is the new media policy. Number three, benefiting and learning from the experiences of others who might differ with us in our belief, in our ideology, but we learn from them. Like I mentioned, Karl Marx and Socrates. Number four, uh, the characteristics of the community leaders. Let's go. And visit them. The statement of Karl Marx, the delusion of the foreign capital and the value of the national capital. Who is Karl Marx? Karl Marx was born in, in 1818 and I think died in 1897 or something, or 18, uh, 
in, 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 at the end of the second of the 19th century. He was the founder of Marxism, communism, and he was a social uh, entrepreneur. And uh, he was an economist, leading socio sociologist, and this one of the most famous one. His statement, fictitious capital, is considered as one of the main pillars in building the modern economy. Who might differ with him as his intellectual, religious philosophies, but we have to acknowledge his contribution to the science of socialist so social economy. Socialist social economy. We consider his statement an essential part of building the true national economy. That's Socrates, that's actually Karl Marx. Let's discuss what he mentioned. Any national economy or any national investment built on foreign capital is fictitious, and I believe in that. Because it's not, it's, it's built on external changeable factors not built on solid, stable internal foundation. This is what's happening nowadays for the last 50 years since the creation of what we call World Bank and IMF. This is what made the poor developing nations who are relying heavily on foreign capital for investment to suffer badly from borrowing policies of the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. A lot of leaders keep borrowing, 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 borrowing. Either they are ignorant, idiots, or traitors. They should be charged for treason because they are destroying their own national economy and their own country. Such an institution so far did not help local the study or the people or the countries borrowed money from them. Did not help. The poor developing countries in building and developing their national development program to transform them from consuming countries into becoming producing countries. How to achieve that? As this question came to me by one of my colleagues. We have to build a social path inside a road map. All the time, you have to have a roadmap for yourself. Social path inside a roadmap. Having known pillars, calculated steps, methodical thoughts, and specific, dimension, specific dimensions and sequential stages. This is actually how we build the roadmaps. Known pillars, calculated steps, methodological thoughts, specific dimensions and sequential states. This is something that you have to do inside your roadmap according to what you have of resources, knowledge. Then we have to do the following. After designing the roadmap, do the following. Most important thing is the philosophy of our idea. What's the philosophy of our, 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 our idea is localization. We should build our strength on the local, the resources that we have. And it's one of the main recommendations of the Old Yemen Summit, which happened in Turkey uh, by UN in, in 2016. What localization we have here to talk about? Number one is our human resources, the public. Number two, our agriculture, agriculture, and agriculture and livestock industry, because it's local. Number three, handicraft industry. Number four, another productive industry. And all of them are local, are local, are local. Let me explain more about what do I mean by productive industries, productive local industries. Number one, the marine industries. If our homeland is surrounded by seas and oceans, and then we have a lot of rivers, Okay, especially seas and oceans. Okay, and what they have of resources, we have to find such resources inside the sea, inside the ocean, inside the rivers. And nowadays, 
they call this new economy is the blue uh, economy. Then we build our educational system or syllabus based on that so to suit the industrial economy from this side. Then the orientation of, of the <coughs> education system should meet the needs of this industrial economy, which is the marine industries. <coughs> Number two, desert industries. If we are surrounded by deserts, like most of the Gulf countries, even most of the Arab countries, okay? Then the orientation of the educational syllabus should meet the needs of this industrial economy. Because inside the desert, there's a lot of wealth. Then mountains industries. If we are surrounded by chains of industries and plateaus and hills, then our syllabus, the education syllabus, actually should meet the needs of this industry, serving what we have. Some of those mountains could be made out of certain minerals. We have to discover this. You know, in the story of uh, Dulkarnain, when he went to those people who could not be able to speak, very, very primitive, and they told them, you know, you see these blocks? Said, what? There in front of them. This is called iron. I told you Hadid. Zubar Hadid is the big blocks. They did not know that they have the solution in their own land. And they used the human resources, local, iron local, copper local, and build this wall between them and Gug and Magog. Mountain. Agricultural industries, if our homeland produces valuable crops and fruits at different seasons because of it is rich soil, abundant water resources, suitable climate, and the experience human resources, then the orientation of, our, of the educational syllabus should meet the needs of this industrial economy. Number five, livestock and animal industry. If our homeland is rich in rangelands and having the suitable climate for grazing animals, then the orientation of the educational syllabus should meet the needs of the industrial economy. Number six, forests, habitats, natural reserves, and protected natural areas, industries. If our homeland is rich in these natural resources, then the same again. The orientation of the educational syllabus should meet the needs of this industrial economy. Number seven, tourism and antiquities industries. If our homeland was among those ancient countries where civilization was built, like in Iraq, like in Syria, like in Greece, like in uh, Italy, like in China, like in Egypt, Libya, uh, and others. There's a lot of antiquities there. Then our educational syllabus should be oriented to meet this industry. Then the last and not least, and you can add more and more as you want. Science, technology, knowledge, and thoughts industries. If your or our homeland is rich in highly educated free thinkers and human resources, uh, then the orientation of the educational syllabus should meet the needs of this industrial economy and more, as I mentioned. Well, another question came again from somebody else. How to do this? You keep giving us all this theoretical discussion. Yes, how to do it? First of all, first and not last. And if you don't have number one, which is A, you can't go to uh, any others. Creating political atmosphere, allowing political atmosphere, allowing political atmosphere, allowing pluralism, community participation, citizens' empowerment independence of state institution, building strong civil society sector and organizations, maintaining 
the required civil liberty space for individual to be pioneer, innovative. Then maintaining the civility of the state, the civil state and the prohibiting, prohibiting militarization or securitization. I'm, I'm saying it, saying it hundreds and thousands of no more for militarization or securitization because how can you be ruled by somebody holding a gun in his hand, driving a tank, having a bullet, having a missile? Of course, he'd use his tool because his tool or her tool became in the what's in their hand, not what is in their head. Civility of the state not militarization or securitization. This is A. If you have this, we go to B. Making the citizens real owner of the state, of the state, of the country, of the society, of the community, of the ministries, and making all the officials to feel that they are employed by the citizen of the state, whether the king or queen or prince or president or prime minister, or ministers, whatever it is, they are not above the citizen. The citizen is granting them this authority. Number three, investing in education, different kind of education. Not one size can fit all. Number four is investing in social services, like water and sanitation, health and education, road, and all these kind of services. Number five is protecting the local culture, values, history, and others. Number uh, six, or and uh, the last and not the least, rating the profile of importance of the family, because the family is the one who will build the society, the community, the state, and produce the leaders for you. The family of mother and father, male and female, and the extended family relatives. This is number one in the discussion of uh, the fictitious or uh, capital by Mark Karl Marx. Number two, the media industry and the Fancouche policy. The brutal, repressive policies of whom? of the military again, and security, and the authoritative uh, deep state controlled by individual leaders. Individual leader. No institution, no organizations, no departments, no values, no cultures or traditions. As Pharaoh said, I am your supreme Lord. Let such individual leader from these three categories, authoritative, autocratic, military, or security. And the state to focus on one thing, on one thing. Him, her, or the state focus on one thing heavily, which called how to control the masses through media. So he, will, he or she will control the executive, legislative, and legal powers. And all of them will be lying in the hand of the one leader who become like a human god on earth. And everything will be in his or her disposal. So he or she become the only legitimate legislative power in the country. And they'll be treating the citizens as a rebel, barbarian subjects, not human beings. And this is what have been happening during the Pharaoh dynasty, Nimrud in Iraq, Neron in Rome, Mao. Stalin, Hitler, and others.
he or she will declare themselves as God and will appoint and actually and will make his people to become slave worshippers. And this is exactly what Pharaoh was doing in the in the in, in the old days by bringing Pharaoh's magician. Nowadays, it's not Pharaoh's magician. It is media professionals. Today's Pharaoh's magician, Pharaoh, the, the new Pharaohs, or the new Nimrud, or the new Mao, or the new Stalin, or the new Hitler, or the new uh, Nimrud, and others, will do this for their magician, which are the media professionals. Create what for them? First of all, highly developed, highly developed, and advanced satellite channels and media platform spreading the toxins of their thoughts and the ideology, whether this is through social media or others, through hacking your telephone. Like I was listening to something yesterday, how certain organization hacking your telephone and threatening you and your privacy. Preparing armies of what? Of electronic flies, electronic mosquitoes, electronic insects to attack anybody opposing his lordship, the pharaohs of the new history. Organizing extravagant glamorous uh, conferences and competition which are meaningless and of no value to the citizens or to the public. Number three, number four is producing dramas and moving to blur and change the national history. Number five is making research studies centers, research studies and policy centers to promote what? Their false slanders. Number six, sponsoring the religious, political, social role models, new ones and icons, as you can see them, especially over the last 10 years, from 2011 to up to now, I've seen them stripped naked, the old icons and the new icons becoming also naked as well. Sponsoring religious, political, social role models and icons to legitimize and legislate the state delusion. State delusion. State delusion. Number seven, creating brutal repressive security forces, not to protect the citizen from the thugs and the criminal, but to terrorize citizens and all the opposition of Ferris group. Or the opposition groups of Ferris. Number uh, two, eight, adopting the open-ended martial law. Martial law. Then the state of emergency. Open-ended. We know countries that have been using this one for more than uh, 70 years now. This made the scene read, written, and heard media and dramas becoming most effective tool in their hands to fulfill their wicked dreams, obscene dream, and objectives. <clears throat> Discussing point number three, which is benefiting from others. Benefiting from others. Uh, but you have to keep protecting your culture, your values, your religion as well. This when I used uh, Karl Marx today and uh, Socrates as references. This was also <coughs> adopted in the good old days by the state of Muslims in the Abbasid dynasty 
when Harun Rashid, then his son Al Mamun, started to have this translation, state was interested to translate the knowledge from the Greek and Latin to the Arabic at that time. Okay. And they created or they built Baytul Hikmah in Baghdad at that time. Then after that, Baghdad had at that time more than 100, 100, 100, 100 libraries. Baytul Hikmah was a reading right, library and house of knowledge discussion at that time. Till the Mughal came and entered Baghdad between 29th of January and 10th of February, 1258, and destroyed all these works of knowledge. Hundred libraries, hundreds of thousands of textbooks, manuscripts, wealth of knowledge destroyed by the Mughal. Okay? This is started by the state in the Abbasid time. But the beginning of the translation was not at that time, it was at the time of the Prophet who started to ask his companions to learn other languages, Persian, Latin, and others. Because he understood the word Iqra, which is the first word in the Quran, which means read comprehensively, as learn the cognitive and scientific knowledge then know the scientific methodology of such knowledge. Not only learn it, but know the methodology of it. And I mentioned some of his says, as well as others been mentioned in the good old days. A Tirmidhi narrated this hadith, who said, Allah and his angels and the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth, even the ant, in its hole, and even the whale in the sea, doing what? Praying for any individual, teaching people goodness. That means knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. It means learning, learning, learning. It means educating, educating, educating. It means understanding, understanding. This is how he was telling us, this individual who was teaching people goodness, Allah, angels, all the creation of God, even the ant and the whales, praying for him. Another narration, actually, he is talking about the scientist. Who is, who is, who is actually asking forgiveness from the scientist? Like yourself. Okay? People in heaven, earth, whales, and the depth of the water. So in the two, in the, the same hadith, but two narration, one is mentioned the teacher of goodness, the second one talking about the scientists, al -ulama. This is the teaching of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before anybody else came and built civilization in the recent history. Second hadith, Whoever amongst you trades, go, trades the path in search of knowledge, he or she traveling from their country for thousands of miles to learn something. God will lead him or her to a path of heaven, to a path to heaven. And if you or you leaving your family, your country, your people, everybody, and traveling these hundreds or thousands of miles to learn something. God will lead you to a path to heaven, inshallah. And this also be mentioned by him and the references there. Also the Prophet ﷺ said, if the world is equal, to the wing of a mosquito, he will never let a disbeliever in his knowledge and his faith to drink from it even a sip of water. Some of the Arab old saying is like, 
seek knowledge even in China. It's telling the Arab, the Bedouins, to travel from the desert in the Middle East to China. Keep seeking knowledge. Another proverb in Arabic is seek knowledge from cradle to the grave. It's another old saying. Okay. Allah said in the Quran, are those equal? Who are those who know and those who don't know? No, cannot be equal. Also, another hadith narrated by the Prophet uh, sorry, I mentioned by Prophet uh, who said, the scholars are the inheritors of prophets. Pushing people forward to become knowledgeable. Seeking knowledge is an obligation on every Muslim. This also Ibn Majah by the Prophet whether this Muslim is male or female. So the hadith of the Prophet reflects his understanding, his comprehensive understanding of the meaning of the word Iqra. So my advice to the mothers and the fathers who are just making his children to rehearse hadith and Quran good, but not good enough. Rehearsing and memorizing is good, but what we need them to understand every little letter inside the meaning or the depth of meaning of the hadith and the Quran. <sighs> Number four, characteristics of the community leaders. Who are the community leaders? Who are the state leader? Who are the country leaders? Who are the president or the king or the queen? Who are they? Especially in the new modern life. People should be chosen by the community society or nation, not those who are imposed on public by military and security forces, by riots erupted by their followers, by mobs, rubble, riffraff, thugs, and ringleaders. No, no, no. The people have been chosen by the community, freely by the community, by the public, not the others. Number two, community leaders characteristic. People should they should know their, their actual personal life and history. See, having a history of social engagement, not only social engagement, social track record and impactful achievement should be achievers. Number D, believing in the country, believing in the community, believing in the society, believing in the nation and the nation will be believing in them. Number E, having these more characteristics to make it like uh, a criteria. Transparency and credibility, humility and altruism, spending and efforts, giving, spending efforts and giving, Sacrifices and preferring others on themselves, accountability and benchmarking, building bridges and partnerships, respecting and recognition others, recognizing others, networking and complementarity, social engagement and consultation, rehabilitation and the empowerment, planning and organizing, belief and trust studying and research, ascertainment, ascertainment and familiarity, justice and fairness, approximation and keeping up all different social components and following the policy of leaving no one behind, leaving no one behind with another recommendation from the 2016 World Humanitarian Summit in Istanbul, as well as others. Somebody might say this might be too much to have to be to be in one man. I said him or her with their teams. It's not only one man. I said no one man shown. No man shown. There's advisors, there's assistants, and there's ministers, and there's colleagues in the team. 
this 25 or 30 criteria plus others should be in them and more that you bought as a criteria for the characteristics of the community leaders. My last point is the message to my young brothers and sisters, my young colleagues, my young comrades, my young mates. As I mentioned earlier, we're celebrating. Before I started this, I forgot, unfortunately, at the very beginning to condole the people who are suffering from the fire in their forests, in Turkey, now Italy, Russia, Algeria, very badly, very badly, uh, Greece, uh, Cyprus, Tunisia. We have to pray for them. And my advice to them is do the rain prayer that Muslim used to do in the good old days. Do the rain prayer that Muslim have to use in the good old days. Because no helicopter, no plane will be able to cover the thousands and thousands of miles in fire. So may Allah help them on this blessed day of Friday. We celebrated as Muslims, as well as we should let our uh, friends in humanity to celebrate with them of the new Hajj year 1443. This journey started by a man, a woman, was all 15 years older than him, and the young boy at the age of nine, and a friend, 1400 and more than 1443 years ago, which could be 1453 years ago, or 54 years ago. The journey of what? The methodology and the philosophy and the structure of the journey was what? Journey of what? Journey of reformation, journey of enlightenment, journey of construction, journey of society building, journey of liberating the hearts and minds and souls, journey of emulating, illuminating the path of consciousness, the path of consciousness and equalizing all people, equality. Journey of this, talking about reformation, enlightenment, construction, society building, liberation of souls and minds and the hearts, eliminating path of consciousness and equalizing between all the slaves of God. This is his journey which is started 1453 years ago. His message, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, spread beyond the imagination. One man, one woman, one young boy, and a colleague. Spread beyond the imagination, beyond the east and the west, the north and the south, the skies and the caves, the seas and the oceans, the rivers and the lakes, the highlands and the lowlands, the mountains and the hills, the valleys and the deserts, suns and moons, stars and shooting stars, and more and more and more and more and more, and more genie are believing in him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. More genie, no genie, the genie of Allah din believe in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Message. Please, young people, don't be deceived. Don't be saddened by what? The tyranny might, you can see that the, the tyranny might of the tyrants. No, 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 no. They are much weaker than the small insects that you trampled, that, that, that you trampled underneath your feet. Or the fine dust, you walk over it. All these would be this insect and this dust. Don't become fatigued because of what the anti-humanity have. Remember what Allah has for you is better and never ending and everlasting. Young people, don't despair Allah's mercy. Don't despair of Allah's mercy. His mercy encompasses everything 
as I mentioned here in this hadith, which I mentioned before, by Tirmidhi, if the whole world for Allah to Allah was equal to a mosquito's wing, if the whole world to Allah was equal to a mosquito's wing, then Allah would not allow a disbeliever in him to have a sip of water from it. It's for you, believers. Don't trust to pick up the fruits. Your planting or your plantation will bear their fruits even after a while. Be patient for victory. You know why? Allah did not give victory to his messengers and prophets والسلام, before becoming despaired. Please remember that you and me are not messengers and are not prophets. Do not despair of praying a lot. Allah loves to hear your humble prayer, your supplication, and your cry for him. Because he is going to give you more than what you think. Request from Allah what he has for you. What he has prepared from you for you, not what you want to have from him, because he knows what suits you and you don't know what suits you. Please remember that the world is not a home for survival, a home for eternity. The hereafter is the eternal life. Young people, you all know that. Heaven has eight gates, eight, five and three, five and three, eight gates. You can enter heaven from any one of them or from all of them. Also remember that you are not going to heaven only but what you have done of good work unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers his blessing and mercy upon you. You told the Prophet, even you, Prophet Hassan, he said, even myself, I'm not going to enter heaven, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, eh, with the mercy of Allah, not with my own deeds. Last but not least, do you want to become a member of Allah's people? Of course, he said, yes, I want to become a member. It's not enough that you want to become a member. You have to make him let you become a member of his people. Then this is a success story for yourself. Young people, let us work together, me and you. Oh, my hand is here. Let's work together. In the companionship of Allah, to become the people of benevolence the people of excellence. When we do the following, to become benevolent to ourselves, how? By, with piety. Nobody can see piety. Benevolent to our relationship, family, wives, children, father, mother, and everybody, with mercy. Benevolent to our societies, with justice and fairness. Benevolent to our homeland, by defending it, Benevolent to other creation by serving and protecting it and not torturing it. Benevolent to the Prophet وسلم, and the other prophets by following their footsteps and their guidance and the guidance of the Prophet. And benevolent to Allah, how? By being modest and being ashamed of showing him a sin that we are doing because Allah with us wherever we go whenever we go so if we would like to become the people of benevolence we have to become three five seven those seven people Jazakumullah khair Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah wa barakatuh thank you for being patient with me and uh, I hope that actually we can see you next week in another talk, inshallah.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته